Yes, uh, we're continuing with the chapter. Which one? Under dresses, and uh, we have uh, read about how Wanda was uh, treated differently by the other girls because of her name and because, yes, uh, she wore the same blue faded dress to school, right? Yes. And uh, so the girls, they would wait for her outside school and they would ask her questions. What were the questions they asked her every day? That is, how many dresses do you have? How many shoes do you have? Right? And every time Wanda would reply that she had a hundred dresses and she had 60 pair of shoes. Right? And it was very difficult for the girls to believe the, her that if she had so many dresses and so many shoes, why is it that she wears the same dress every day? Right? And so knowingly or unknowingly here that these girls were putting the child in a very difficult situation. Why was Maddie uncomfortable about this? Maddie was uncomfortable, isn't it? That her friend Peggy would ask that. So she would accompany her friend. She would be with her friend. And she did that, yes, because she was afraid that Peggy would start teasing her. If she came to know that Maddie was also wearing hand-me-down dresses, some of the dresses, they belonged to Peggy only. And her mother used to, you know, like add a, a th few things to it or make little changes to it so that the dress appeared a little different. Okay, right? So here, she was afraid that if uh, she stopped teasing Wanda, she'll start teasing me. She did not want to lose uh, Peggy's friendship. And Peggy was one of the most popular girls of the class, uh, of the school rather. And uh, she wore very pretty dresses to school. What about Peggy as a person? As a person, Peggy was a very nice girl. She did not like it when uh, young children were bullied. She could not tolerate it when, uh, you know, uh, people would uh, treat animals uh, in a bad way, then why did she do that? So she just wanted to have fun, but she did not realize this having fun can have far reaching consequences, okay? Yes, so uh, let's uh, continue with the chapter. Right, here. Yeah. If only Peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with Wanda, accord of her own will, she would decide that I will not have fun. What does having fun mean, meaning here? To tease her, right? Oh, well, Maddie ran her hand through her short blonde hair as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. What difference did it make? Slowly, Maddie tore into bits the note she had started. What was the note? She wanted to write a note to her friend. Please don't do this. Stop behaving like this. Why are we troubling this girl every day, right? She was Peggy's best friend and Peggy was the best liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. So she's there thinking that no, Peggy cannot do anything wrong. Whatever she does, it is right, okay? And uh, so yeah, first she started writing a letter to her but then she tore the note. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggins Heights and stood alone in the schoolyard. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. So Wanda is very quiet. She answered the questions the girl used to ask her, then she would go quietly to her seat. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. And that too when Maddie would and Peggy would ask her. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue with colored trimmings. And she remembered that was brilliant jungle green with a red sash. You look like a Christmas tree in that. The girls had said in pretended admiration. Please underline this word, pretended. Because they are making fun of her. They're making fun of her and they're having fun. They're asking her questions. And when she gives the answers, they pretend to be impressed, right? They pretend to admire her responses. Here she talks about a pale blue dress with colored trimmings. 
So Maddie remembers one or two dresses which she talked about, and uh, yeah, she thought that they lo looked or uh, they sounded very pretty. But of course, here Peggy was there just pretending to be very, very, you know, like yeah, amazed by her creations or amazed by her dresses. Thinking about Wanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Maddie began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and coloring contest. Now there had been announcement of a drawing and coloring contest for the boys and girls of room number 13. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses and for boys of designing motorboats. Please underline this. Underline this. Can you tell me like here, girls designing dresses, boys designing motorboats? Why this pattern particularly? Why couldn't it be the other way? Girls designing motorboats and boys designing dresses. Could it be? When we start thinking, you know, like of certain behavior, we have a mindset that people should behave this way, girls should behave this way, and boys should behave this way, girls should wear these colors, and boys should wear these colors. What are we doing? We are categorizing. What is this thought called? We are stereotyping. Bo boys don't cry. Girls are soft hearted. Boys uh, are very muscular. Girls wear pink. Isn't it? Right? So all this here, what are we doing? We are stereotyping. Isn't it? Why couldn't it have been the other way around? It could have been. But, but never mind. This is what the competition was. We'll discuss about stereotyping also at the end of this chapter. Probably Peggy would win the girls' medal. Peggy was an artist, right? So she was very good and uh, she was definitely going to win the girls' medal. Peggy drew better than anyone else in the room. At least that's what everyone thought. She could copy a picture in a magazine or some film star's head so that you could almost tell who it was. So she was so good, even at portraits and sketches and drawings and, uh, you know, like here. So she was there. Yes, uh, it is a stereotype, right? You guessed correctly. Now, oh, Maddie was sure Peggy would win. Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners, then they would know. So the, the next day, the results are going to be announced and then they would be sure of who's going to be the winner. What was everybody thinking is going to win? Peggy is going to win. The next day, it was drizzling. Maddie and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they didn't wait for Wanda Petronsky on the corner of Oliver Street, the street that far, far away under the railroad tracks and up the hill led to Boggins Heights. Anyway, they weren't taking chances of being late today because today was important. So outside the school, they would stop her, ask her questions. But today it was drizzling. They did not want to get wet. They did not want to get late, right? So today they did not stop for wonder and today the results were going to be announced so they wanted to hurry because it's an important day yes do you think miss mason will announce the winners today asked peggy oh i hope so the minute we get in i can't wait i'm so anxious to know about the results said maddie of course you'll win peg hope so said peggy eagerly the minute they entered the classroom they stopped short and gasped it took this breath you know like wow there were drawings all over the room on every ledge and windowsill dazzling colors and brilliant lavish designs all drawn on great sheets of wrapping paper there must have been a hundred of them all lined up these must be the drawings for the contest they were everybody stopped and whistled or murmured admiringly. So when they entered the classroom, what did they see? They saw these drawings all over the classroom, everywhere. What was to be seen? Drawings of beautiful dresses, hundreds of drawings all over the classroom. As soon as the class had assembled, Miss Mason announced the winners. Jack Beggles had won for the boys, she said. 
and his design for an outboard motor was on exhibition and in room 12, along with the sketches by all the other boys. Right, so yes, who was the winner among the boys? Jack Beggles had won, and his drawing had been displayed in the adjacent room, room number 12, along with the other sketches. In room number 13, what was there? The dresses by the girls, the designs by the girls, hundreds of dresses were there. As for the girls, she said, although just one or two submit, sketches were submitted by most, one girl and room 13 should be proud of her. This one girl actually drew 100 designs, all different and all beautiful. In the opinion of the judges, any one of the drawings is worthy of winning the prize. I'm very happy to say that Wanda Petronsky is the winner of the girls' medal. See, look at the drawings over here, the beautiful dresses that she has made. So what did the teacher announce? Who won the prize among the girls? Wanda Petronsky. Most of the girls had submitted two or three sketches. How many did Wanda submit? 100. And each one of them was so good that the judges were of the opinion that any one of her painting could have got a prize. See, look at it. Beautiful designs here. Beautiful dresses that she has made. Unfortunately, Wanda has been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause that is due to her. Let us hope she will be back tomorrow. Now, class, you may file around the room quietly and look at her exquisite drawing. Exquisite, very beautiful, and all the details taken care of. See, look at it here. The trimmings over here, right? The frills over here. Look at the sleeves over there. Every detail taken into, beautifully presented. So where were Wanda's hundred dresses? Did she have those dresses? So those hundred dresses were her paintings, right? Yeah, and uh, yes, yeah, so for those beautiful paintings, she has got the prize, right? Yeah, so she's got a applause for that, she's got uh, the medal for that, but sadly enough, she was not there because she's not been coming to school for the past two, three days. The children burst into applause, they're clapping for her. And even the boys were glad to have a chance to stamp on the floor, put their fingers in their mouths and whistle, though they were not interested in dresses. Even the boys also, they laughed and jumped and uh, yeah, they made a lot of noise, right? Look, Peg, whispered Maddie. There's a blue one she told us about. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, said Peg, and here's a green one. Boy, and I thought I could draw. See, even Peggy is there. Do you think it is false admiration or it is true admiration? Yes, it is true admiration now. And she thought, oh, I thought I was only one. But look at her dresses, aren't they? Beautiful. They are beautiful. Right? So 100 dresses made by her. Each one of them worthy of winning a prize. And how did the boys behave? They're whistling and stamping. They're getting a chance to be noisy, right? Creating a disturbance. Okay, so they're very happy there to just look around and see the paintings, the drawings which have been done by Wanta. Okay, let's go to the questions now. Why did Maddie ask Peggy to stop teasing Wanda? What was she afraid of? What was she afraid of? That Peggy would start teasing her because even she was poor and she did not have nice dresses to wear to school. And so uh, Peggy it would stop teasing Wanda and start teasing her. Who did Maddie think would win the drawing contest? Obviously Peggy because she's a best friend. And uh, why? Because she was a great uh, artist and she could uh, copy anything from the magazine and uh, it would look similar. Who won the drawing contest? Wanda. And what had she drawn? She had drawn beautiful dresses. How many? 100. And e each one of the drawings, what was it like? It was beautiful. All the details taken into, you know, like care of and uh, yeah, amazingly drawn. Okay, let us look at these questions. How is Wanda seen as different by the other girls? 
How do they treat her? Why is she treated differently? Why is she treated differently? Because of her appearance, because of her name, right? Because she wore the same dress to school. How do they treat her? Are they friendly with her? No, they're not. The only time they talk to her is when they ask her about her dresses. So they keep on asking about her dresses then, right? How does Wanda feel about the dresses game? How does she feel about it? You think she likes being asked this question? So she is also giving a good response to them. She's saying, I have a hundred dresses, right? And yes, so she described some of them, a green dress, a blue dress, and a 60 pair of shoes, right? Her dresses, some of silk, some of velvet. So she thinks these girls are there asking her questions and she does not know or she does not realize that they are making fun of her, right? So why does Maddie stand by and not do anything? Do we approve of Maddie's behavior? No, we don't. How is she different from Peggy? She's poor while Peggy is rich, right? And why is she supporting her? Because she is afraid that if I don't support her, she might start teasing me. And do we approve of Maddie's behavior? No, 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 we do not approve of Maddie's behavior. What does Miss Mason think of Wanda's drawing? She thought that each one of her drawing was prize winning. And what do the children think of them? Even Peggy admires, she says, wow, like they're really good. And this is true admiration, not pretended admiration. So everyone, the way they whistled, the way they clapped, and the way they admired that. So they're really impressed by Wanda's creativity. Okay? Yes. Is it clear? So with this, we have come to the end of the first part. The textual questions you're going to do in your notebook. Okay, right? Any doubts regarding this part? What about uh, Maggie, uh, sorry, Maddie and Peggy's behavior? Do we approve of it? No, we don't. Right? Can we say that uh, they used to bully her? Right? So can we have a look at uh, bullying? Or in one shop, when we're angry, bullying is different. Bullying is putting someone on purpose. Some examples of bullying are being caught, physically hurting someone, excluding them from a group, or posting mean things about them online. Even this is so bullying. Oftentimes, the people who bully are hurting from something in their own lives. Bullying may make someone feel powerful at school if they feel helpless at home. This does not make bullying a no problem, but it can be useful to understand why it might be happening if you find yourself bullied. Okay, sorry, is it visible? Wait, wait, I'll share the screen. I'll share the screen. Let's have a look here. Why do people bully? Who are the people, you know, like who bully? And uh, do you think they are also scared of themselves? Or do they have some kind of insecurities? Right? Okay, so let's have a look at it again. Can you see the screen now? Yes, is it visible? Put it somewhat on purpose. Some examples of bullying are being caught, physically hurting someone, excluding them from a group, or posting mean things about them online. So why do people bully? Oftentimes, the people who bully are hurting from something in their own lives. Bullying may make someone feel powerful at school if they feel helpless at home. This does not make bullying a no problem, but it can be useful to understand why it might be happening. If you find yourself bullying other people, talk to a trusted adult or counselor about it to help figure out what might be wrong. It's very, it's very right. important to talk. You should never, you, uh, you know, health. tolerate uh, such a behavior. Amber, Amber used to love school, but now she hates God because she feels like there is no one she can trust. When other students make for wearing the same clothes, 
friends, her so-called friends don't stand up for her and even join in. Sometimes people call Amber fake and it hurts her feelings, but she is too embarrassed to tell anyone. The bullying continued daily. Amber started being alone then and stopped talking in class. Thankfully, Amber's favorite teacher noticed and got her to open up so the bullying could be addressed. You may have heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. This is not true. What people say and do to you can have lasting effects on how you feel about yourself and others. You deserve to feel safe and happy at school. If you witness bullying, you can help make it stop. Don't keep quiet. Reach out to the person being bullied by letting them know that you saw what happened. Tell an adult, or if you feel safe to do so, tell the bully to stop. If everyone works together, we put an end to bully.